You've seen those really cool light domes that YouTubers use and you love the way the lighting looks on camera. You want that because that's exactly what you need to get you started. What if I told you that I could show you how to make your own DIY version for less than $50? You'd be like, shut up and start talking. Wait, what? <laughs> One of the most common problems that really holds people back from starting their content creation journey is the fact that they either don't have the fancy lighting equipment or they aren't quite ready to make that $500 investment to get one of those aperture or small rig. And if that's you, this is where the DIY stuff really comes in handy. Not only is it fun to build your own stuff, but it also gives you a deeper understanding of how lighting works. It serves as proof that you are better than all your friends and it will probably help you make a better decision when you do decide to invest in something more professional. And that's assuming you'll want to do that because right now I'm being lit by the DIY light dome that I'm about to show you how to make. Here's what you'll need. Number one, a cake tin. The shinier, the better. The one in my kitchen was a little bit rusty. I don't bake. Not since the accident. So I went over to a friend's place and took his. He doesn't bake. Not since the accident. Number two, LED strip. Now, it's really important that you search for LED daylight strip. None of that RGB stuff. And make sure it has a CRI of over 90. CRI stands for Color Rendering Index, which is a system through which we measure how good or bad a light source makes things appear compared to natural light. So, fluorescent hospital lighting. <laughs> Apple Store lighting, CRI is not the same as color temperature. That's how warm or cold a light is. In shooting videos, it's more about how it affects skin tones. And you have lovely skin tones if I may say so. Number three. Number three, a photo clamp so we can have a base. Trust me, it is worth the extra few bucks. Number four, a light stand to keep it all steady. Number five, white cardboard or styrofoam for the dome. Six, dark cardboard for the grid. Seven, kitchen foil. Eight, an old shower curtain, a piece of cloth, baking paper. I'm using an old raincoat. Nine, scissors, paper, glue, duct tape, and double-sided tape. Assuming you have most of these things at home, this shouldn't be more than $50, 50 euros. You can skip the clamp and the stand and it's way cheaper, but you'll end up with a nice light that isn't really practical and there's no point in that. I've got a bunch of affiliate links with those items in the description so you can check those out if you want to. And now we get to the fun part. But before we start, let's take a look at one of the pro domes and figure out how it works. I own a Godox Litemon, the daylight version. I think it's pronounced Lightmons, like light monster, but I just like saying Litemon. It sounds exotic. Fancy. The Godox Litemon has a CRI of 96. The first thing we observe is that the light is soft. And by soft, I mean the shadows are blurry. Now let's take a look at why. The Godox Litemon is an LED that would be way too harsh on its own. So it's diffused once and then again to get this soft effect. However, a large part of what makes the light dome different from a softbox is the fact that the insides are reflective and help bounce the light all over the place before it exits and hits you way softer than if the dome didn't exist. But what I particularly like is the fact that the light comes out in a forward direction and touches what you aim it at without spilling onto the background. Now, that is very important and I will come back to it later. How do we recreate all of this? Well, we can't. Not exactly in this way because we don't have one big light source, but like 420 tiny ones. 420. <laughs> To unify all those tiny lights and make them seem like they are one single light source, we're gonna attach the LED strips to the inner sides of the cake tin and not to the bottom. In this way, the light produced exits as one uniform beam. Now I forgot to leave space for the clamp, so be careful with that. Next, I measured the circumference of the tin and marked it out on white cardboard or in my case, styrofoam. I tried to be precise, but honestly, who cares? And then I cut it out. I 
kind of wanted to make a cone shape, but I grew up in Nigeria. We did not have any arts and crafts. We barely had a classroom. So my cone sucked and looked more like something from The Handmaid's Tale. Next, I slathered glue on the insides of the styrofoam and stuck some kitchen foil to help bounce the light. Using double-sided tape, I molded and stuck the cone to the sides of the tin. It's more of a cylinder than a cone, to be honest. Next, I used duct tape to secure the edges. I then went on to painfully measure the inside of the cylinder before realizing that I could just measure the outside because it's literally paper thin. Using the measurements, I marked out a strip of white styrofoam and proceeded to cut it out. I then placed it into the cylinder and realized that I could just glue whatever fit. There was no need to measure it in the first place. I mentioned earlier that the grid is important. Here's why. The dome and diffusion layers soften the light, while the black honeycomb grid makes sure the light goes in one straight direction. Meaning, if you angle it properly, your face is lit up, but your background isn't. Which is perfect if your background is not super exciting. I have a whole video explaining how grids work. Go check that out. Moving on, here's how I made the grid. I measured and cut out some strips of cardboard, made a zigzag pattern, duct taped the points together, placed it into the circle we made earlier, and glued the ends to the sides of the circle. If that's confusing, check out the video with the entire process. For the final soft touch, I drew a circle on my old raincoat and then I cut it out. I cut it out a little bit bigger so I had space on the sides to glue it down. I then secured it with some duct tape. And with that, we are finished. And here it is compared to the Godox Le Demo. Now, in the spirit of fairness, I have turned down the Godox to an intensity that is similar to the LED lights. And honestly, I fully expected that this would be at best mediocre and you know it would be just like a fun DIY thing to do but I am totally surprised at how good it looks. I think I'm gonna keep it set up and use it for my only fan Instagram lives and TikTok videos. Soft. Now I have to admit that this may not be as durable or as practical as a more expensive professional option that's it. I am a woman of integrity and poise. I will not pee on your head and try to convince you that it is raining. It is what it is. And what it is, is a perfectly functional way of lighting a talking head video in a small room for a cozy or moody vibe. For the record, I just want to say that I am not like a DIY guru or something. If I can do it, then you can do it better. If you don't want to do it at all, there are affiliate links below with different lighting dome options for different budgets. Now I do make a commission if you use those, so... Thank you! And if you don't want to make your own light from scratch, maybe you already have a ring light lying around somewhere, in which case you can turn your ring light into a softbox using somewhat the same principle and methods as we just did. Check it out in the next video.